Hey guys, this is the third video in the series of videos in which I am talking about the best coding practices which we should try to follow when we are programming in the C Sharp language. If you haven't watched the first two parts, then I would advise you to do that by following the link in the description. But if you don't want to do that right now and you want to watch them later, then that is also perfectly fine because these videos are not really connected with each other they can be watched in any sequence that you want to so without wasting any more time let's get on to the first best practice of this video the first one is track and address to do and fix me tags and never leave them unattended so if you haven't used the to do's or fix me tags in your code then i'm going to tell you what they are for there are several instances when we encounter some problem in the code logic or some kind of issue which we cannot fix at that instant because we have more pressing concerns to look at so what we do is we simply mark those code areas with these kinds of tags and their name is self-explanatory if it is not that serious then we use the to do tag if it is kind of serious but not that much then we use the fix me tag so in this example there is a to do tag and there is also a fix me tag we use them by writing them in a single lined comment and what we should do is we should try to track them and address them every single day whenever we can we can also take help of other team members if the problems are too much for us to handle individually there are many extensions available which can highlight and track to do's and fix me's for us they can be utilized so that we can return our focus and fix the small pesky stuff which we have left to be addressed later. The worst case is when these fix me's and to do's end up in the production code because I have seen these tags in projects which have been running for over a decade and we cannot help but become clueless as to why they were originally placed and how to fix them because if we just blindly remove these tags without addressing the core problem then it could be possible that an unintended bug lurking somewhere will surface sometime in the future so it is a good practice to address these to do's and fix me's whenever we have time to do that all right so the second best practice for this video is fields which are set only in the constructor should be read only this should be fairly obvious by now that fields which are not being set from anywhere else but the constructor in the class should be marked as private for this i'm going to show you an example in this class there are four properties age first name last name and birth date and the constructor is accepting the values for three of them which is first name last name and birth date the age can be calculated by determining the difference between the current date and the birth date so there is no point in setting this age as a writable property because if someone accidentally overwrites it with some other value then this age and birth date can have inconsistencies between them so if the fields which are only set once in constructor are public and contain crucial data for the functioning of class then we'll run risk of accidentally modifying them which will bring in unpredictable behavior and bugs in the code. The last best practice which I am going to tell you about in this video is do not declare multiple variables on the same line. So declaring multiple variables in the same line makes it harder to traverse the code. In this code example there are four variables which are declared in a single line of code. Worst case is when variables are declared in the same line and they are also being set in the same line. This becomes an absolute nightmare when there are hundreds of lines of code in a single file and this is done in several different places. It becomes harder to understand and traverse the code by just taking a single glance at it. Now to fix this code, what I will do is I will create different lines for all of these four variables. This is for the third one and this is the last one. And that's it. Now the code is much cleaner and more easier to understand when we are just looking at it without you know diving deep into this method. So that was it for this video guys and I hope that you have understood its contents. 
If you have any questions or suggestions, then feel free to use the comments area. If you feel that this video has helped you, then please don't be shy and place a like on this video and also subscribe to this channel so that you will be the first to know when any new video comes out. And as always, I am really thankful to you guys for watching this video and I will be back with the next part. Till then, have a great day.